welcome everyone. It's good to see all with us this morning. We welcome you to Bayou Baptist Church on this day, the 22nd of December, 2019. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship. Hymn number 89, O Come All You Faithful, in our opening prayer. <laughs> Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and be holy, for nothing of the angels. Oh, come, let us adore Oh, come. Thank you, Father, for what we're celebrating at this time of the year. Without the birth, there'd have been no cross. There'd have been no saving of sins. I thank you, Lord, for each one that is here. And I pray that if someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that, Father, they may come to know you this very day. Be with us. Lead us. Guide us and grace. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the way of announcements, just a few announcements, of course, to uh, that's coming up in, in a week or so, or a couple of days, and then also also in January as well, as everyone knows, this coming Wednesday, of course, is Christmas Day, and also on that day it's a falls on a Wednesday. We will not have Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, this coming Wednesday, nor the following Wednesday. Folks. So for those of you who come on Wednesday, for the next two Wednesdays we will not have Bible study, the 25th or January the 1st. We'll resume after January the 1st, for the next Wednesday after January the 1st. So, so be aware of that. That will be January the 8th. So be aware of that. Uh, school is also out here in St. Tammany Parish, and I'm sure everywhere else as well, uh, here until January the 6th, when they resume back, which is of course a Monday, so they go back to school on there. We still have calendars, uh, so if you would like to purchase calendars, we still have calendars for 2020 uh, in the front pew, they're $5 each, so if you'd like to purchase some, you can do that. Uh, in the pews, you'll see uh, envelopes for Lottie Moon. We are collecting for Lottie Moon Christmas offering for this Sunday and next Sunday. So if you would like to give to that, you can do so over and above what you give for the working of the Lord as well. 
Uh, also, let me say thanks to all who participated in the tree, and it's called the Andrew Tree, and, and giving unto with the uh, Cresson family, as we have a whole bunch of things underneath there. And I'm thinking, what, Monday or Tuesday is supposed to bring it? I mean, she's in the back with the kids. So I'm thinking they're going to be sending it either tomorrow or Tuesday uh, to the hospital. Zachary Cresson is still in the hospital, and from my understanding, will be there until uh, sometime in the latter part of January. Um, so I think what he's progressing good. He's doing well, and everything is going well there. But they'll be in, they'll be there. So he's in the hospital for Thanksgiving. Now he'll be in the hospital for Christmas as well as for the New Year as well. But he is progressing really, really well uh, with with everything. <coughs> um, also on this day, believe it or not, Debbie Garrett's birthday, so you have to wish her a happy birthday also. So today's her birthday, and then tomorrow, Cynthia Contreras' birthday uh, is tomorrow. So Cynthia and Victor are not with us right now. I think they, they, uh, they've been having family in, and they went to Texas, and they came back from Texas, and I don't know how many other family members they got. But either way, just uh, if you want, you can call Cynthia. Uh, her name's in our phone book, and we're sure a happy birthday, and her birthday will be tomorrow as well. So be aware of that. You can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Any other announcements that I may have forgotten or anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else going on or and or taking place? If not, Mr. Howell will come at this time and lead us in our hymn, hymn number 96, Good Christian Men. Rejoice. <laughs> concerns, I'd ask you to remember to pray for the different people that we are continually praying for on a daily basis. Do pray for them. Uh, pray for those who are in hospitals and also in nursing homes, people like Mr. Virginia Hall and Mr. Charles, both of them, one's in uh, Lacombe and the other one's in Greenbrier and others throughout uh, the city and all throughout the places that are uh, in nursing homes. Do be in prayer for uh, men and women in the military and their families, especially those who are not with their families at this time at the point and other places. Pray for them. Christian missionaries throughout the world that are proclaiming the gospel, I'd ask you to pray for them. Pray for Melissa. She had surgery on her foot this past Friday and everything went well with that surgery. She is recuperating at home. Uh, Renee is taking care of her at home, so but she is she is doing better. She is doing fine. Everything went well. So just continue, just pray for Melissa as she had surgery. She had a bunion taken off of her foot. So uh, for those of you who've had that procedure done, you know what's involved, and, um, and the 
healing part of it. So just pray for her and remember her in prayer. Ginger is not with us this morning. She is under the weather. Um, so pray for her. She's not feeling good today. Uh, so remember her also in prayer. And pray for those who are not with us for whatever reason. If we have a few that are out, just pray for them and remember them also in prayer. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Anyone or anything? Take it. Yes. I also have two silent prayer requests that are really pretty large. Okay. Okay. We'll keep you in prayer and prayers of Thanksgiving that you are doing better. We'll continue to pray for your healing and for your health. Others? Uh, Jack? Yeah, I'd like to put in a prayer request for my son, Stephen. Okay. He's struggling right now with a lot of things. Sure. Okay. All right. So remember him and Brandy. How's Brandy doing? She's doing much better. Good. Good. I'm going to continue to remember her as well in prayer. So remember both of them. We sure will. Yes. And pray for you as well. We sure will. Yes. Others in prayer. Remember Shell back there in prayer. She's been having some trouble with her eyes, but is doing better. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's, uh, that's uh, so that's good. So just remember her in prayer and pray for her and all that goes on as far as with her as well. And Brandy, remember them too in prayer. Uh, as quick. Clarence. Prayer of Thanksgiving, both my cousin and my uncle is back home after successful surgery. So prayer of Thanksgiving. Oh, good. They both did okay. Yeah. Yeah, my uncle still suffers with, you know, quite a bit of depression for losing both legs, but okay. that's why he's coming along. He's still got a long road to go. He does, yes. Yes, anybody with diabetes and when they have that, yeah. So I'm sorry to hear that. Pray for you as well. You're going to be heading to Birmingham, is that right? Yes. Yeah, traveling mercies for you. As, you. as you'll be traveling to Birmingham to visit family, then traveling back this week as well. So we'll just remember you in prayer. And a little hop, skip, and a jump. Um, that's only 300 miles. That's nothing, okay? That's right. <laughs> I can do that with my eyes closed. <laughs> Birmingham's an easy place. I just can't stop in Birmingham. I gotta keep on going. <laughs> huh? I said it's like the halfway point. It is the halfway point, that's right, yeah. But I gotta yeah, I can keep do that one. Anything further than that, I'll have to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <clears throat> Other prayer requests. Concerns. Thanksgiving. Again, just pray for those who are not with us this morning. It's good to have Zachary with us from uh, Michigan, Sandy's son. How long are you to be in? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So it's good to have you here with us, and it's good that you're here. Uh, how much How much time you got left up in Michigan? I have about a year and a half left. Year and a half. Okay. All right, we want to continue remember you in prayer and, and with that as well, so yes. Uh, Debbie, how is uh, Billy? He is home from the hospital, but you know he's still going through dialysis two to three times a week, so okay. I think he's getting his strength back a little bit, feeling right. better, but I don't know if dialysis will be a permanent thing or Right. Yeah. He too has diabetes and other pro other health issues as well. So I want to remember him in prayer, as well as your mom and your sisters also in Kentucky. Pray for them and pray for you and Johnny as well with y'all health and what y'all deal with, especially Johnny with his treatment for cancer. Remember him in prayer. Mr. Billy's family as well. I want to remember Ronnie in prayer. Ronnie too is dealing with cancer also. So I'd ask you to remember Ronnie, his son, in prayer, as well as other family members that he has that are dealing with health issues. Um, uh, Harvey, Dovey, uh, Helmer Ruth, and Barbara Lawrence. Uh, many, many of his family members are. So I want to pray for, I want you to pray for them. But again, especially for Ronnie, he's dealing with the cancer and the, and, and the different things that go on with him as well. And, uh, he's in a bout of depression also, so just I'd ask you to lift him up and the Lord will lift him up to get him out of his depressed state as well. Uh, Milton back there, we want to remember Milton Dio in prayer. Uh, Milton has some 
health issues that he too is dealing with. So I'd ask you to pray and remember Melton in prayer as well as Sandy. Pray for both of them and what he is dealing with and pray for healing and for help uh, in his life also. So remember them in prayer. Others, um, Kendra. Remember Kendra in prayer. Kendra is dealing with some stomach issues and uh, some health issues also, is that right? Yes, yeah, so remember Kendra and Eugene right there in prayer, and keep them in prayer also. So we remember y'all too in prayer, as well as the family, so yes. Anyone else or anything else? Glenda, how's the family? He's doing as well as can be expected. Okay. And Dad's about the same? He is, but okay. he gets confused more and more and more. Uh-huh, yeah. It's just a slow decline. Right, yes. Yes, so just... Uh, just remember the family, remember y'all in prayer as well. Um, again, pray for those who are traveling this week, visiting family and friends or whatever the case may be. And the only thing I can tell you is be careful out there. It is hectic and it's going to get even more hectic tomorrow and Tuesday. Uh, if you thought it was bad this weekend, wait. Monday and Tuesday is going to get even worse with everybody going around. Um, so. Just be careful out there and, and, and traveling mercies for all, regardless of how far or how, how close you're going, it doesn't matter. Just be careful and, uh, and just pray for the many people. Again, just remember the people who are not here. Uh, again, Melissa and Renee. I think Danny Bryan had to work today, so he's at, uh, at NASA, so I know he's working. So just remember him in prayer. Uh, and just pray for different others that are going through difficulties and whatever else may be going on in, in their lives as well. Again, anyone else or anything else? Let's go to Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, as we come before you, Lord, again, we lift up in prayer all the concerns, the many, many people that are dealing with different health issues and health problems, regardless of the severity of the health, we pray for healing, we pray for grace, for mercy, and for help in the lives of many people. Some are here, some at home, some in a nursing home, and maybe even some in hospitals. And we lift them up, Lord, and we pray for help, for grace, for mercy, and for healing. We pray for the many that are struggling and going through difficulties, the things at work, things at home, and the battles we have with ourselves the many things that we deal with day in and day out. We pray for your help, for your grace, for your mercy, and for guidance in our lives. We pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. We lift them up and we pray for them as well. Traveling mercies for all who are traveling and will be traveling over this holiday for, uh, for the Christmas and the New Year. We pray that you'll be with them, watch over them, and help them as well. The many spoken and unspoken prayers alike we lift up. We pray for those in the military, and we ask that you watch over them and help them. We pray for Christian missionaries throughout the land that are proclaiming the gospel. Be with them and help them also. We thank you for your many, many blessings. We thank you for all that you've done and are doing in our lives. Lord, we pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, whomever they may be. I pray today that those who are here, that you may open their hearts and that, Lord, by your grace, they will come unto you and give their heart and their life to you if they have not done so already. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as Al comes and leads us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 118, What Child Is This?
God, again, we come before you, Lord, and at this time, Lord, we come and we bring our gifts to you. We thank you, Lord, for providing for us. We thank you, Lord, for giving to us things needed in our life and how indeed you were there for us each and every time. Lord, we come now and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Bibles this morning, turn if you will, first of all, we're going to be looking at two passages, first Luke chapter 2 and verse 26 through 38, and then the second passage is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. In just three days, we will celebrate Christmas. It seemed like just yesterday we were celebrating Christmas 2018. And now here we are again, another year later, and 2019 comes this Wednesday, and we're celebrating another Christmas. It seems like time is just rolling by. Christmas, time for presents, family, food, friends, and music. It's the most wonderful time of the world, of the year. Children excited about what's under the tree, presents open, paper everywhere, and your whole living room is a mess. And yet there are happy faces all around. Big and little children playing with their new toys. Sometimes children play with the boxes that the toys were in, more than maybe they play with the toys. <coughs> Food being prepared for all the sound of Christmas throughout the house. Yep, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But let us not forget from the birth we celebrate. And also the most wonderful gift that was given to every man, woman, and child, regardless of race, color, social standings, regardless of your health, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, whether you live in a nursing home, a regular home, or no home at all. Everyone has the opportunity to this gift. He came to die for all and for all to come. And everyone can celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, but understand, all of this was done not because we were good enough, not because we asked him to do it. Remember, Jesus came voluntarily. God did this. And not just then, this was already planned even before 
It says the creation of the world. God had already planned all of this. And it was all by grace. We didn't deserve any of it. By grace. This is what Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, and 10 says. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. What is it? It is a gift of God. Not by works, so no one can boast. Why? For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Such an awesome God that he cared enough to come, leave his throne in heaven, born of a virgin, for one reason. One reason. Thirty some more years later, to die on a cross for our sins. That's why he came. That's why he was born. Such an awesome God that we have. God came in the flesh, walked among the streets of Jerusalem, Middle East, with his disciples, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and no one, I mean no one, looked upon Jesus and saw the face of God. <coughs> no one. And understand him taking nothing away from him, not even Mary. There she was. Behold, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of everything. Remember, it is he who created us, breathed into us life, but more importantly, it was he who came down from heaven to be born of a virgin to die <coughs> for our sins so that we can have eternal life. I want us to look at these two passages and see servants of God and how indeed <coughs> and what God had done. You know, sometimes it's hard to comprehend the Lord God as man. I think Martin Luther, back in his day, the 14, 1500s, he said it right. He says, when I am told that God became a man, I can follow the idea, but I just don't understand what it means. For what man, if left to his natural prominence, if he were God, would humble himself to lie in a feed box of a donkey or to hang upon a cross. God laid upon Christ the iniquities of us all. This is the infallible and infinite mercy of God which the slender capacity of man's heart cannot comprehend, much less utter. The infallible depth and the burning zeal of God's love toward us, who sufficiently declared this exceedingly great goodness of God. And that is so true. Try to wrap your brain or your mind around that. Would you have done something like that? Would you have been born just to die for the sins of a sinful person? The thief on the cross. When that thief turned to the Lord and said, remember me when I come into your kingdom. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. He died for that man. Where the other thief hurled insults at him, his, his own people there at the foot of the cross hurled insults at him. And yet, there on the cross, do you know what Jesus said? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Compassion and grace and mercy, even as his life was ebbing away, there on Calvary, he still cared. Mankind did not give up what God and what He was so going to do. But look at His servants. First of all, from Luke chapter 1 and verse 26 through 38, both passages are probably familiar to each and every one. 
First in this, it's from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. He sent him to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man by the name of Joseph, a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now I'm sure they had many, many Marys back in that day. It was a popular name, just like Bill and Bob and Jane and, you know, and Debbie and Sandra and many other names that are popular even today. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Well, Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will be with him. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked, wait a minute, how will this be? I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the Holy One born to you will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to have been barren is in the sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Mary. Mary, Mary, Mary. Servant of God. She believed the word of God as was told to her by the angel. She had no doubt whatsoever. She had no idea how the child was to be born since she was a virgin. And asking of the angel how it was this to happen, didn't that, she didn't have the doubt. She just wanted to know how it was going to happen. She, was will, she willingly allowed herself to become a vessel in which God came down from heaven to earth to become a man. Amazing, isn't it? Again, I asked the same question. How many of you believe such a wonderful, sinless throne of heaven and come down to earth in a sinful, terrible, dirty world like it was? And it was very bad even back then, believe it or not. Anything and anything that could be done was done. Didn't matter. You know, that's why they get that old slogan, as in Rome, do as the Romans do. And they did anything and everything that you could. And so we see here, the angel talks to Mary. And so what does Mary do? She empties herself, as did God when he came from heaven. And she became God's servant in order to accomplish God's will, not hers. She pushed her will out of the way. See, her will was to marry Joseph, to have children. To raise them, to see them grow, and to have a happy and nice family. But here God had other plans for Mary. He wanted to use her to where he would come into the world as a man. And she fully surrendered herself to the Lord. She put her trust in God's word and in God's power. She also knew that it was by God's ability to do what couldn't be done. To give birth to a son. To have a son. She, like so many others down through the ages, was used by God for the deliverance of all mankind. What an awesome God we have. Throughout the Old Testament, if you go back and you read in certain places, like in Micah, like in Isaiah, or even in Jeremiah, and even in Psalms, and other places as well, you will read where the foretelling of the coming of the Messiah was to come. And here we have the fulfillment 
of the prophecy by, the old, by what God has told the people in the Old Testament. See, all of this was God's plan. It was God's plan for our redemption, but also God's plan for her and also for mankind. Now, she had no idea that one day God would use her in such a wonderful way. As the angel spoke to her, and I'm sure as he was speaking and as he told her all that was going to happen and how it was going to take place and who it was that was coming, she comprehended some. I don't think she ever fully understood all that happened, that was going to happen or take place. Remember now, this is a lady, a girl, 12, 13, maybe 14 years old at the time. This is not someone who's 31, 35 years old, 40 years old. This is a very, very young teenager. They got married very young back then, 12, 13, 14 years old. This is very common back then. And so here she is. As the angel has told her all that has taken place, including with her cousin Elizabeth. And Mary's response, I am the Lord's servant. How many times have we, have you and I, the Lord has come to us and have we said, Lord, whatever your will is, regardless, I am your servant. Here she was doing the will of God the Father for the good of mankind and for all. That was Mary. Now we have Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 and in verse 18 through 25. Joseph is well. Notice what is written concerning him. We know very, very little concerning Joseph. Very little. Matter of fact, after the birth and after Jesus is basically, I guess, 12 years old, nothing is ever heard concerning that of Joseph. There are many speculations and opinions as to what happened or what takes take place or whatever. So, but basically, we, we only have very little concerning Joseph in here and in other places as well. So in Matthew chapter 1, in verses 18 through 25, here we have Joseph also a servant of God. And this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Now, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is, what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophets. And from Isaiah, the virgin will be ch with child, and will, call and, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Again, we see the work of God and the plan of God in the lives of not only Mary, but also in the life of Joseph. Joseph, as we read, was pledged to be married to Mary. Now, being pledged back then was a big deal. It's like, it was even more than today's engagement. In order, to, when a person was pledged to be married back then, the only way that that pledge could be broken was either by death or divorce. Even though they wasn't married yet, the pledge meant a whole lot. And it was a meaningful thing. And so here we have Joseph being pledged to be married to Mary. He had plans. 
He had dreams that he and Mary would indeed marry, have children, and of course live happily ever after. He being a carpenter, would work at his trade, she would take care of the home and the children. But something happened to those plans. He found out Mary was pregnant and that it was not his doing. He didn't do this, nor was this child that she had was his. So his plans were, because he loved Mary, he cared about her still, even though she thought, he thought that maybe she was unfaithful to him, that he was going to divorce her quietly and then move on. Now, understand back then, if this had come out publicly, and Joseph had went to the religious people, Pharisees, Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, whatever. He could have had Mary taken outside the city and stoned. That's how serious it was. So he didn't want to see any harm come to her. So he had in mind to divorce her quietly and then move on. But. God had other plans for Joseph that Joseph had no idea all that was going on until the angel came to him. You know, sometimes in our lives we have these plans. We have all these things that we want to do. But yet God has other plans as well. You know, it tells us in the, in the Word of God in Proverbs chapter 16 and in verse 9, in his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines the steps. Also in the, in the Old Testament, also from God's word in Proverbs chapter 19, in verse 21, it says, Many are the plans in man's hearts, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. I tell you, I know this from experience. The Lord, indeed, we have these plans, these ideas. But the Lord says, I have other plans and other ideas that you have no idea of what I want you to do. And here was Joseph contemplating to divorce Mary. As they get up in the morning, divorce her quietly, go on, and Mary was going to be by herself with this child. But then an angel came to Joseph in a vision. Maybe it was Gabriel again. The same Gabriel who came to Zechariah, the same Gabriel who came to Mary. Maybe it was the same angel that went to the shepherds after the birth of Jesus. We don't know. It just says an angel came and in a vision while Joseph was sleeping and told him all about this child that Mary was going to have. A special child. It was going to be a child like no other. Why? Because in verse 21, he, the angel tells Joseph, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. See, this is what people need today. To be saved from sin. Not just from having a bad day, or not just from other things that are going on, but the most important thing that a person needs in their life is to be saved from sins. And the only way that you can be saved from sin is through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and what he did at Calvary. That's the only way. The word of God is clear. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ and no one else and nothing else. Not our good works, not the Lord's Supper, not baptism, none of these things. Not coming to church, but it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Why do we do these things? Why do we remember the Lord's Supper? Why do we have baptism? Why do we come to worship God, to adore Him, to give thanks to Him? Ascending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. See, it is the sins that separate us from God. 
It is a sin to separate anyone from God. And, and, and people, when they go to hell, why? Because, they're, because they have died in their sins. Because they have not given it up to the Lord. See, it is sins. And, and the angel told Joseph, he has come to save his people from their sins. Such an awesome thing. See, God wanted Joseph to be his servant, to be beside Mary, and to marry her, and do all that he was supposed to do from the beginning. Joseph wakes up, and notice it says, what did he do? It says, when Joseph woke, up in 24, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. He was obedient to the word of God. Again, I stress it over and over again. If anything, be obedient to the word of God. Jesus said it is better to obey than to sacrifice. That's where we get into trouble, all of us, including myself. When we disobey the word of God, we always seem to get in trouble. We, if you look at it, the trouble comes because we disobey God's word. He was obedient to God's word, and what happened? He became God's servant. Such an awesome thing. He married Mary. He took her home as his wife, yet had no union with her. There was no sexual relationship at all until after Jesus' birth. And the two people, by God's grace, became God's servants. And later, he and Mary had other children. God blessed them with others, boys and girls. They were blessed, and God was still with them. And it brings us to the third thing, and that is Christians. Truly born-again believers, past, present, and future. Can't leave believers out. Servants of God, that's what we all are, every one of us. Not just the pastor, not just the minister of music, not just the Sunday school teachers. Every truly born-again believer is a servant of God, everyone. We read in different passages where people become servants of God and they spread the good news, did they not, about the birth of Jesus Christ? The shepherds, Simeon, Anna, the wise men. Even in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that the Messiah would come. And they too, prophets, priests, kings, etc. Today, like Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds, we too can tell others about the greatest gift that's not found under a tree, but that's found in the Word of God. And that gift is Jesus Christ. God himself came as a man. And this gift, when it comes in their hearts and their lives, it will change their lives forever. Not just for one day, not just for a week, not just for a month or a couple of years, but ever. It changes your life. It changes everything when Jesus Christ truly comes in your heart and your life. See, we are God's servants. And it's our privilege that God has commissioned all of us to tell the good news. In Matthew chapter 28, in verse 18 and following, here it's recorded in God's word. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you always, even unto the very end of the age. Such an awesome God. But again, the first question is this. Does Jesus truly live in your heart and in your life? You may know him intellectually. You may even heard about him. But that doesn't do you any good. 
Does he live in your heart, in your life, and in here? Do you believe the word of God just as Mary and Joseph did? And both were obedient to the word of God. You know, today, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can come publicly, walk down, repent of your sin, and put trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, coming down the aisle is not going to save you. What saves you is Christ in your heart and in your life. It's Him right here. Unwrap God's greatest gift and allow Him to be a part of your life. If God has opened your heart and if He enables you to come, then why not come? Why not embrace the greatest gift that you can't find under a tree? Allow the gift of God to come into your heart and into your life if he has not already. This is the invitation to each and every one. Let us stand. <coughs> Almighty God, if there's any here to whom you have spoken to, whose heart you have opened and are enabling to come, I pray that by your grace and for your glory, that they will come unto you now. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. If God has spoken to you, you come as we sing hymn number 275. Just as Joseph, just as Mary, and many others have surrendered. Why not surrender to the Lord? You won't regret it for all eternity. <laughs>
ask that you pray for them and remember them also in prayer also as she comes and gives her life to the Lord uh, as our Lord and as her Savior. Is that right? Okay. So, so this is an awesome time in the Lord. Um, may I ask Al to lead us in a closing prayer in a minute and you come around and give the right hand of fellowship and also let her know that you're praying for both of them as well uh, as they have given their lives to the Lord. It's always beneficial not only for everyone but for, especially for the family to pray for them for guidance for leadership and for health uh, as the world Satan and everything just throws everything at us to hinder our walk with the Lord and so now you know, what she needs to do is continue to walk with the Lord Amen. and she now has dedicated herself and given herself to the Lord as well uh, again do remember we will not have Wednesday night services coming Wednesday courses is Christmas but we do invite everyone to come next Sunday for our service. We do. We will have Sunday school next Sunday, so be aware of that. And we will have regular time of worship service next Sunday, which is, of course, after. And then the following Wednesday, no Wednesday night as well. So let's all stand. Al, lead us in a closing prayer, and I ask you to come around and just give them the right hand of fellowship. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We just thank you all that you've done, and Lord, we bring our praises to this one that has come to know you. Lord, we pray that you will be with her, and you will give us strength and the knowledge to understand you, and let her know, let her know that you are with her at all times. We thank you for this family. We pray that you will bless them, and we pray, Lord, that you will watch over all of us, keep us, because there is no and that's the family of God. That's those that come to know and trust in you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here. Seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.